The Bible says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 verse number 9 that God does not desire that anyone should perish but that each and every one of us should repent and have everlasting life. Because of the everlasting love of God, he revealed the sacred things to us. Psalm 25 verse number 14 that God revealed his sacred things to them that he loved. So I pray we will not perish as we keep on listening and obeying his word in the name of Jesus. So many of you are no longer taking the rapture serious. Many of you, you were zealous. You were walking with carefulness. But today, because you see that Christ did not come, what God says must surely come to pass. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Psalm 90, verse number 4, that for a thousand years to the Lord is like a day. And a day to the Lord is like a thousand years to him. Even if God had revealed revelation of rapture 2,000 years ago, and till now, rapture has not taken place. Have you bothered to ask yourself, how many people have passed away ever since you have been hearing about the coming of the Lord? So you should know that one thing must happen. That is why we need to take this message and prepare our way and be sober and be vigilant just like Christ have instructed us in the book of First Peter chapter 5 verse number 8. We need to be vigilant because Jesus is coming. This is the revelation that I received concerning the window of heaven. In my dream, I saw myself standing in a place I don't really know. If that place is like I'm standing in a certain state and in this state is unknown to me. While I was there, I saw people were also standing there. Then two persons, which I can't tell their identity, if they were men or women, they now walk up to me where I was standing and they said, we just looked through the window of heaven and we have seen that all the work in heaven is finished and the angel I idle doing nothing. They are only waiting for the Lord to give them the go ahead to blow the trumpet. And I say to them, no, I have to see for myself. And I ran quickly. Before I knew what was going on, I saw myself running. But at once, I saw that I was standing at the window of heaven. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse number 10. If you open it, you will see where he said, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour this blessing for you. So I didn't know heaven has a window. But in this revelation, I was standing right at the windows of heaven. While I went to confirm for myself, standing at the window of heaven, I looked through in the window of heaven. In a twinkle of an eye, I was able to see like a lot of things. Everything in heaven actually is finished, is in place. As I stood looking through the window of heaven, immediately, remember I told you that it is here on earth that we don't have much wisdom to perceive, to see things ahead of us. But in heaven, once you are there, everything will be made known to you in a twinkling of an eye. So while I was standing at the window of heaven, looking through heaven, I began to hear the Spirit of God. And I knew very well that this is the voice of God speaking in my heart. And he began to say, all the things in heaven is in place. The work in heaven is finished. And right now, the angels are doing nothing. All they are waiting for is for the Lord to give them the go-ahead to blow the trumpet. As I finished hearing this in my spirit, right there at the windows of heaven, I ran quickly and met these people, these two people, who gave me the information. All of us became worried, wondering, what are we going to do now? Seeing that the time is near, seeing that all the work in heaven is done, the angels are only waiting for the Lord to give them the go-ahead to blow the trumpet. It shows that in a twinkling of an eye, the trumpet of the Lord will sound. Any moment from now, Jesus will appear. We can see it for ourselves. This is no longer a joke. As I'm sharing this message, the trumpet may sound in one hour time. As I'm sharing this message, the trumpet may be tomorrow. 
as I'm sharing this message, it may take a hundred years again to come. But we don't know. What God requires is that we need to be vigilant. We need to be prepared. We need to check ourselves and make sure our ways are right with Him. Many pastors are no longer preaching about the rapture. All they are talking about is how to build a church, how to break down that old building and start up another one. People are heaping money, planning to buy land. You have already built a house. You are not tired. You want to build second house. You want to build third house. You want to build another mansion. You want to build another school. You want to buy private jet. You want to do this. You want to do that. But you are not minding that Jesus is coming any moment from now. You are not going out for evangelism. Please, my brother, my sister, this is not time to fight. Many believers today, they are living in malice. Many believers today, they are quarreling one another. Many believers today, they are in the act of gossiping one another. Not knowing that gossip is like murdering someone that God warned us about it. Many believers today, they can stand on their pulpit, use their pulpit to abuse other people out there, instead of them to reconcile with one another. Just like Pastor Paul Rica was abusing me, using his pulpit somewhere where he was having a meeting, calling my name, telling people how I am not hearing from God. I just pray that he realizes himself now before it is too late and ask God for mercy. Because if such a man that I respect so much will bring down himself and be talking about me, a nobody, then something is wrong somewhere. He needs prayer. Now is not the time we need to fight. The rapture is about to take place. Many believers are still playing with their salvation. Some people don't even have what to do. Everybody wants to come to YouTube. They don't have a significant message for the world. Many of them, they are coming there to use the name of Jesus to abuse people. They open their channel. All they do is criticism. You don't see them preaching salvation. You don't see them giving a message that will help a sinner to repent. All they are doing is when they hear the preacher preach or anything they say about this person, they will go and copy it, come and sit on their channel and begin to talk about that person and begin to criticize that those people calling them false prophets calling them witches and wizards calling them all kind of thing calling and pointing out their error instead of them praying for those people please let's come together and evangelize souls for jesus there are many people that haven't even heard of the rapture you may not understand why god is delaying the rapture maybe delaying it because many are still praying for their loved ones many are praying for their children to repent many are praying god Please, extend the rapture so that my children can repent, so that my wife can repent, so that my husband can repent, so that my community can repent. People are praying. And we, we are here fighting one another on social media. You are still wearing trousers. You are still painting. You are still putting false things on your body. You have to change. You have not done your resolution. You are still owing credit. You have to change. Remember, I once shared a revelation of how I saw myself in heaven. Right there, an angel gave me a robe. And the robe was stained. And when I told him to change this robe and give me a clay robe, he said to me, I should go back to the wall and pay my debts. Because nobody owing credit will enter the kingdom of God. So that was why the angel gave me that dirty robe. And you are hearing me right now, maybe owing, I don't know, where you are owing this debt. Maybe your office, if it is in your office, it is an agreement between you and your employer. You know, that when they pay you salary, they take part from there. That one is a different thing. If the trumpet sound, you are in agreement. But make sure you live a life without sin. Make sure you live a life that will please God. If you are living in an unscriptural marriage, you will never make heaven. Those of you wearing shy shy, like I said severally, I will keep on saying it. You can never make heaven. You have to repent and remove all those precious stones from your clothes, from your shoe, from your bag and everything. Put them away because it defies you. The glory of God is waiting for you. When you go to heaven, you will see those shy shy things. You will wear all of them. You will use them. You will walk your feet on the streets of gold in heaven. 
What's the essence doing what God does not want from you and me? I want you to think about your internal life, which is very important because our life is one, it's not two. When you miss heaven, you can never miss hell fire. You must strive to go to heaven. You must strive with your family. You must try as much as you can to make it to internal life before it is too late. Stay away from sin. Stay away from wickedness. Put away unforgiveness. Strive for heaven. In summary, I want to let you know that the time of the Lord is nearer than we all think. Jesus is coming back and nobody know the day, the time he will blow the trumpet. He has opened my eye to see through the windows of heaven. When the first time that God took me to heaven, that first time I saw some mansion that were in the foundation level, why some are completed. But this time around, as God took me to see through the windows of heaven, I saw that every mansions in heaven are completed. No mansion is in the foundation level with what I saw. The path that God showed to me, it shows that everything is finished. Nothing is there to hinder the rapture anymore. One big event that the world has been waiting from the creation of this world till now that has never happened. It's going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. And I believe that our generation is the generation of the rapture. I pray that we will not be taken unaware. Go for evangelism. Reach out to the sinners on the streets. Go everywhere preach the gospel. If you cannot go, your money can do it for you. Yes, if you have somebody who is effectively doing it, you want to sponsor that person, you can do it. You are still the one doing the evangelism. You can print a track. You can give somebody money to print track and share for people. You yourself, you can print a track and share for people. Reach out to the poor and the needy. Visit the less privileged. Go to the prison. Share this message to everyone. It is the message from the throne of grace. So be faithful to share this message to all your contacts. And I pray that the Lord will reward you immensely in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you as you share. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.